everyone, I'm Jesse from themod2.com. And I am Mosquito. And today, I have no idea what got him to Bill and he decided to let two of the monkeys out of the cage. And he brought us hair. What are we doing here, Chris? Uh, with the popularity of rigid tubing, uh, we've done a video doing bends in the acrylic and how to do that. And so we decided to come here today to talk about the different options that are available for fittings. Adios. Okay, the first one we're looking at is the Bits Power C47 fitting. Probably, I would say, one of the first ones in the market that came out, that came out uh, with push fittings. These are actually SLI connecting connector fittings, and these can be used. These can only be used with a 12 mm OD tubing, like I have in my hand right now. So, with tubing like this, you have to be make sure that the ends are nicely deburred, and you, other problem that people might run into with this fitting is that you buy a tubing which is supposed to be 12 mm OD but with manufacturing a little plus minus uh, on the measurements tubing will not slide as easy as anything else so you have to work and you have to be careful that you don't damage the o-rings so a lot of times you have to sand the edge and outside of the tubing a bit to make it work uh, up next is the EK push in SLI fitting. Again, these two were not launched as SLI fittings and people end up using them to hardline the whole loop. Same principle applies. Uh, these have two O-rings inside, just like the Bits Power C47. Again, same principle, same OD. This is again a 12 mm OD. And with this, again, you have to make sure that your tubing is perfectly ready. So you make sure your ends are nicely deburred. If you notice, I've kind of sanded it a bit and that is just so that when I put it in, it goes in easy. Other trick that a lot of people do and I suggest is when you're trying to put or push your tubing inside the fitting, uh, put some coolant on it or I just suggest dip it in some distilled water. That kind of adds some lubrication so that it can slide in easily. Uh, things to keep in mind with these kind of fittings is once you slide the tubing in, no matter how careful you are, you're gonna do some kind of damage to the O-ring. So keep one fitting as your test fit for test fitting the tubing uh, because you don't want to be putting the tubing in, taking the tubing out, damaging the O-ring, and then going for the final install and then pop a leak. All right, well, now that we've covered the uh, metric variations, here's one of our, our American-friendly ones, U.S. non-metric friendly. Uh, this one is a Primo Chill Ghost Fitting. This is one of the, their first ones uh, in their first series of them. And this one, unlike the other ones, is not a push-in fitting. It's a compression fitting. And so, as you can see, I took off the ring, and then there's an O-ring, and then you have the base, and then the compression collar. And then to do this one, what you're going to want to do is put on the collar first, and then the O-ring. One thing I did learn is that you don't want to put that too far up otherwise it kind of turns into a pain to try and get the, the o-ring or the collar down and then it just inserts into the middle and the collar comes down and then you just tighten that down snugly I mean you don't have to wrench on it or anything but so one of the advantages of this over the push-in fittings is that these are a lot more easily reusable in that you're running a much lower risk of damaging the O-rings from this versus when you're using the push fittings. Uh, and so it's really easy to just, nope, nope, I decided I don't like where this is located. So I'm gonna change and I'm gonna, you know, just take the tube out. Unlike the other push-in fittings, this end doesn't necessarily have to be quite as refined and as cleaned up as the other one. Because, you know, once you get this O-ring on there, it's really not ever coming in contact with anything other than the base here. And so it's a lot more forgiving in those terms. This is their newer fitting. Um, they call it the revolver. And it works on the exact same principles as you would imagine it would. But it's just got a slightly different design for this collar. As you can see, there's sort of the beveled or chamfered edge all the way around the top. And it just kind of helps keep it from being quite as boxy and bulky looking, I think. And then 
For these ones, for the revolver fittings, they're available in both straight neural, which is what this one is, or diamond neural, which is what this one is, which kind of gives you the option of the two. And then one thing that they implemented on both of these fittings are some little tiny flats right here. It's there on four different sides. And what they've been doing is they have a wrench that you can use that fits these little flat spots. And so instead of trying to tear up your fingers by tightening with your fingers on the threads, and you can just use a little wrench to tighten those down. And on the other side of that wrench are two little rods that fit into two of these holes here. So you can use that to tighten down your compression fitting. Um, I'm not really sure if I would find that part of it useful because I don't, I don't think I've ever run into the need to have it more than just finger tight. Last but not the least, we have a very ugly looking fitting. Now this is just your regular pneumatic fittings that you can buy on eBay or local stores where they sell uh, pneumatic stuff. These are about close to two bucks a pop and this one right here is a 3.8 OD and the thing that when I was looking for weird fittings or you know cheap fittings something which is not standard is finding something which has a G quarter threading on it. These particular ones do have the G quarter fit, uh, threading on it so you can you know install them in any water block or anything that has the standard G quarter threading on it and these fittings are also kind of like a shark bite fittings so they have little two teeth inside or two what do you want to call that that once you slide your fitting in they clamp on and these actually work perfect for copper tubing so what I have here is some copper tubing this is 3 8 OD you can get it at Menards or Home Depot or any store and it slides right in done if you want to take it out you press this little blue tab down you hear a little click and slide out really easy to use really cheap only issue with these is they're not the best looking fittings so I actually was able to find some good looking fittings in this size but they were not 3 8 or half inch they were 10 mm OD so if you have like 10 mm tubing uh, you can get 10 mm copper tubing but if you're in the states that's kind of on the expensive side uh, but 3 8 tubing is cheap these fittings are cheap so if you are on a budget you want to do hard line be creative I think you can create some really nice builds with this or even with something that was a blue theme it actually might look good personally what I like about these two is that the size is just so much smaller than their counterparts in the Primo Chill fittings, the compression mm -hmm. fittings, and the compatibility that that allows to being the smaller fittings. For example, heat killer CPU blocks, I can't use these, either one of these, because the bases barely fit next to each other, and then once you get the compression collars on them, you, they just can't yeah. fit next to each other on that block. Same thing I noticed with the Fovea DDC pump top. So the inlet and outlet are so close that these, I could not use the Primo Chill fittings. But luckily that pump top has inlets and outlets on one set on the top and one on the side. So I was able to alternate. Whereas with a lot of other, you know, pump tops where they have the inlet and outlet in the same location, I could see that being a problem. Uh, one thing that I would say I, I kind of personally like the Primo Chill fittings over these ones. Yes, aesthetically speaking, the EKs and the bits power look better, but the amount of work involved is more because you have to make sure your tubing is perfect. Uh, you, a lot of times when you get tubing for these, which is 12 mm, given the manufacturing issues, so sometimes you know they all say it's plus minus one or you know certain slightly off. So I know this is E22 12 mm fitting and if you measure it this comes out to about like 12.0405. That's enough to kind of where I have to sit down, sand the edge to make sure it's 12 mm so it can slide in. If I don't, it's not going to slide in. Other thing I kind of like about the premature fittings is when you use uh, the tubing. Half inch tubing, for, especially for the United States, is pretty cheap you can get it from McMaster's there's a lot of websites where you can buy you know 
half inch tubing. Also, you can use it with half inch copper tubing, which is again, cheap, not too expensive. So that's my big thing. And the fact that I can, and for my personal use, what I've noticed is it's easier to install tubing into the Primo Chill fittings because the minute you start working with hard line, you don't have any space to wiggle around like you know with standard tubing you can just grab it shove it up and then tighten it in whereas with these there's no space left for that make sure you're not putting too much stress on the blocks uh, materials like you know like GPU blocks that are metal or CPU blocks that are metal they can probably take that stress but acrylic you got to be careful because if too much stress you can ha start having cracks leaks so right now for my one of my CPU blocks, I need to get a new top because the cracks are just too bad on it. To keep in mind too is with that kind of pressure is whether or not the acrylic tubing is gonna hold up. It might itself fracture and crack and then, well then you have to read a little thing. Yep. If you're lucky, you don't have to replace hardware. Yes. Yeah, so that's why leak testing is important with distilled water. This is 38OD. Mm -hmm. What if we cut a piece of half inch copper pipe, use that as a collar. Oh. And slide it in, would that work? Or you'd probably have to solder it together, but otherwise, I know they have like reducer coupling fittings. You could always do that too. True. Next thing you know, we have to be able to solder wires and copper tubing. <laughs> well, so the reason I, want to, well, this for, the reason I like this tubing is because A, it's what, like nine bucks for 10 feet and, uh, the benders for this three size eights, tubing, yeah. the 3.8s are like under 10, you know, 10 bucks, whereas the minute you start talking half inch, 40, it's like 50, 80. Those are the cheap ones. <laughs> yeah. The good ones are like 400. 400, and sadly, we are in a community where if your tools are not even, <laughs> you know, yeah. it says Harbor Freight on it. How dare you use it? Gotta get, a, gotta get the heat gun out and remove all the stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Put our own stickers on it. Hey, why is this? Mod Zoo sticker. This is a Mod Zoo uh, pipe bender. Wouldn't put MMPC tech on it because otherwise Bill would get a thousand questions every day. <laughs> Where can I get one of the MMPC tech tubing benders? Uh, as long as we don't put like, you know, Intel stickers on AMD, <laughs> which I've seen people do. Yield's going AMD now. So He's, am I actually. Yeah. It's my new build. I mean, for my GPUs and my upcoming, that's going to be another twist on the Dell build. It's going to be resurrected. I think I can discuss my plans on the camera. No, too early? Maybe not. <laughs> it'll, it's something that I don't think I've seen anybody do in a Dell build yet, in an XPS case. So, Chris already knows. If there's anything that you found that think we might need to check out, may, might not know about, or if you find any of these or something similar for cheaper anywhere else, Feel free to contact us, let us know, give us a shout out at the uh, modzoo.com. And if you have any questions on any of the things that we talked about, just stop by and... Uh, uh, we gotta go, man. Yeah, we gotta uh, go. Uh, Jesse? <laughs> no, 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 no.